Good day, and welcome back to the Life License Qualification Program video series presented by Business Career College. Again, my name is Jason Watt, and what we're going to talk about in this series of videos will be group insurance contracts. At this point in the course, you've already gone through individual life insurance, individual disability insurance, and individual accident and sickness insurance contracts. We're going to look at group insurance over the next few videos and looking at group insurance together is going to incorporate some of those things that we looked at already in the various videos and in the textbook that you've seen to this point but we're going to now incorporate some of these ideas we're going to lump them together under one contract as it were so group insurance is designed with a little different purpose in mind than individual insurance with individual insurance what happens we sit down with our prospective client, a family, an individual, a business owner, whatever it happens to be. And we identify a risk in that case. Based on the risk, we put insurance in place in order to protect against the risk. Now, group insurance is still a risk management tool, but the need for group insurance typically doesn't come out of one of the three predictable risks. Group insurance is really designed so that employers can put a measure in place to improve their ability to attract and retain quality employees. It becomes a way of offering a benefit to your employees and yes the employees will get some risk management provisions but risk management is usually not the ultimate purpose of group insurance contracts. Although as we go through we'll see that there are many risk management measures built in. Now group insurance doesn't necessarily have to come from an employer-employee relationship, although we will, in the, per in the process of this series, primarily deal with that employer-employee relationship. Instead, group insurance can come about really in any of three different relationships. So as already mentioned, we know that an employer can acquire group insurance such that it will cover its employees. As mentioned, this is where we're going to spend the bulk of our time. It is also possible, though, that a union or association will acquire group insurance in order to cover its members. And then finally, it's actually very common for a creditor to acquire group insurance in order to cover its borrowers. So we'll spend a minute looking at each of these relationships and you'll see that maybe you yourself have been involved in some of these in the past. So the employer-employee relationship, the traditional group insurance arrangement. Well, what happens here is an employer goes out, acquires a group insurance contract, and then the employees become what we call the plan members. They're the ones who would receive benefits if anything happens. It is usual in a small business for the employer, that is the owner of the business, to also be covered under that group insurance contract. A union or association will often acquire insurance for its members. This happens in large trade unions, like for example the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, where they will acquire a contract for insurance and then the members are covered under that contract. Those types of contracts look very similar to what you would see in an employer-employee relationship, where the contract typically includes some life insurance, probably some accidental death and dismemberment insurance, quite likely some disability insurance, and then almost invariably some extended health care insurance. But there are other types of union or association group insurance plans. If you've ever been a student at a post-secondary institution, you may have had the opportunity to join one of these plans. They tend to be relatively inexpensive. They tend to offer a fairly basic range of benefits. Maybe some accidental death and dismemberment insurance, maybe a little bit of life insurance, 
maybe a basic dental plan or a basic prescription drug plan. They tend not to offer disability insurance, they tend not to offer large amounts of life insurance, they tend to be fairly basic plans, fairly low cost, really designed for their members. And having read at this point Module 10, you'll have a good grasp now on the idea that insurance companies need to collect a premium that's sufficient to pay the benefits that they're going to have to pay when they pay out those claims. Creditor borrower insurance is also very common. In fact, arguably, this is the most common form of insurance in Canada. Where we see creditor borrower insurance, notably, is attached to a mortgage. Not only with mortgages, but also with credit cards and car loans. What might happen here? You go to your financial institution, your bank, or your trust company, or your credit union, or your caisse populaire, and you acquire a mortgage. You enter into a mortgage agreement, and as part of the mortgage agreement, the lender, the creditor, will often extend the opportunity to you to subscribe to their group insurance contract, and then if something happens to you during the course of the mortgage, you would have a life insurance benefit paid in the event of death, or in some cases, although less frequently, a critical illness or a disability benefit paid. So we see this is quite a common arrangement. These arrangements are quite common, but really, given what you're going to be doing, it's most likely that the contracts you'll be dealing with when you're dealing with group insurance are going to fall over here. And for that reason, we're really going to concentrate on this employer-employee relationship.